Okay, the recording is started. Let's call the meeting to order at 6.04. My apologies for the late start. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Hearing none. Is there any public comment? Again, hearing none. Uh, Jeremy, can you present the prior meeting minutes, please? Uh, motion to approve the August 8th. Uh, 2020 meeting minutes with uh, minor corrections proposed by John Morris and the uh, September 12th, 2023 meeting minutes as drafted. Uh, second. We'll move it. Uh, second by Siobhan. Um, was there a comment in the middle of that seconding? No. Okay. Are there any opposed to the motion? Hearing none, the most motion pass, passes. Excellent, thank you. Um, I don't see Lori Beth here. Lori Beth, are you are you here in this meeting? Yes, 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 I am. But I'm bouncing between two of you. I see you're 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 on the phone. Is that it? I'm on the phone. Yes, with you, and I'm on the computer with someone else. Well, thank you for your dedication, Lori Beth. <laughs> Uh, are, are, are you are you able to go through a treasurer's report? I really moment? don't have I really don't have much because um, we haven't gotten any final figures or reconciled for September. Okay, and the reconciliation for August had already been presented at the last meeting. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're definitely we're definitely out of sync. Um, <laughs> Once they started changing the, the timing on their reconciliation, I, you know, I, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole right now. One option would be to move this meeting, but that means that every other meeting we have gets moved as well. So I don't know that we really want to do that. So we might just have have it be that the the second executive committee would get the most recent reconciliation and the governing board would always be a month to six weeks behind. I think that's where that's going to land. Um, but that's something we can we can talk about at, at, an, at another time and probably have the finance committee uh, verify all those dates. Um, any, any more discussion on treasurer's report? Of course, we're going to talk about the budget at the at the end of the meeting. Oh, I'm trying to unmute. Okay, okay, I finally got to unmute. <laughs> um, okay. Yes, I sent out the treasurer's report. Uh, there was only a ten dollar bill that we paid last month for Zoom, and we we got fifty five cents in interest. Um, we have no bills that are outstanding that I'm aware of, and we have nothing that's owed us at this point. <clears throat> so that um, you all have the balance sheets and the profit and losses. Um, profit and loss for the one month is just short, very short, and everything else is uh, profit and loss to, from April 1st until the end of September. So, well, one, one thing to add to that as an update, we, we're, we're almost there for, for getting our sweep account set up where we will be, we'll be uh, collecting fairly substantial interest on the money that we're holding in sweep accounts. It requires changing banks and a, a handful of operative things that we have to do, but we're in the middle of doing that. So um, certainly by the next time we meet, we'll we'll have a different report on that. Janiel, I see that your hand is up. Um, yeah, worth mentioning here, this might be the first governing board meeting where we've actually had customer payments. It certainly is the first governing board meeting where our customer payment went to the right account. Um, so we now have two customer payments, and I think that's worth men mentioning. That's a landmark. Totally. That is yeah. that is that is a landmark. Absolutely. Tom, I see your hand is up. Your hand is down. Sorry, team is being I'm not a Tom, if you're speaking to us, you're you're out of range or something. Sorry. Uh, team is not working well for me. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm going to leave and come back again. But my hand was not up. Okay, thank you, Tom. Sorry about that. 
Uh, yeah, for your information, Terry, uh, Teams, I had difficulty uh, 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 accessing Teams myself. Yeah, uh, that's not uncommon. Um, it's been working well for me recently. I couldn't tell you why. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it, it's 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 hit or miss sometimes. But we we use it pretty much daily, and it's got a pretty good record for regular users. Um, but uh, n n not for discussion now. But if uh, if you have alternatives, we'll 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 you know investigate them. Uh, Janiel, you want to go through and, and select who's going to talk about what for the next few uh, updates, please? Sure. Um, sorry, Jerry, just pulling up the agenda here. Nope. Take your time. We're starting with the construction, materials and warehousing, operations and marketing. Yes, I see. Construction update and outlook. Um, we got numbers today. We had and um I'll just give you the the numbers that I have, and that is 123 miles of fiber. Um, that includes the backbone plus the MSTs. Uh, and then that would be one one thousand and seventy six passing. So we we passed the one thousand mark for how many um, customers that we could possibly serve, which is an incredible landmark as well. Um, Lucas, you want to talk a little bit about um, how we're doing on the uh, well, how we're doing generally in the in the, the top the top say four DAs that we're constructing in now. Sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as she said, uh, 1,076 service points pass, and that is uh, between all four DAs. Uh, we are in the process right now of uh, getting some um, customer installs queued up um, with Waits Field. And those are in CLO one, so that's very exciting. Um, CLO two is is coming in hot now. Uh, we're in the last, I believe, 13 miles of that DA um, before we can test and start getting customers there. And realistically, RSO 1 and RSO 2 won't be terribly far behind the way the numbers are looking right now. So a lot of a lot of positivity coming into the winter. And uh, oh, in addition, we've also signed a uh, signed an agreement with Brookfield Sales and Service to get a generator at the Rumney School site. So the harshest of winners will not uh, not deter us from serving the customers. So that'll be that'll be a nice feather to get on that site as well. Um, anything else, Janiel, that I'm missing? Um, we do intend to continue constructing through the winter, so we will s probably slow down. Uh, we have splicers back in the field to, as of today, so uh, our crews are. They were a little slim for a while, and they're starting to pick up again. Um, so construction is continuing, even though it's starting to get cold out. We're getting our street sheets every day, and we see that that actually crews are increasing rather than decreasing as it's starting to get a little bit colder. So I would say that's great news. Um, the other the other piece is that we we're in really good shape with the o, with the OLTs. Lucas mentioned the the generator. Um, and the OLT at, at Callis is up and running. So I think that's that's it. And then we 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 could talk about materials and warehousing. Yeah, one thing first though, Janiel and Tom, I'm going to go to you in one second. Um, we we we've uh, been having more face-to-face -face meetings with Eustace at a at a management level, and they they are. Their goal, which is our goal, we're, we're all dedicated to by the 15th of December, having a total handover of all four DAs. So that, that means that CLO1, CLO2, RSO1, and RSO2 will be ready for installs. They'll be finished testing. They will, they will have subscribers and we'll be able to do installs all through the winter and all through mud season on those, on those four DAs. That is that is our joint goal 
for ending this construction season. CLO3, um, we're just having too, too much make ready problems. We may be able to get that in, but it looks like that's gonna end up getting pushed out uh, into, the, into the next construction season. Uh, Tom, go ahead, sir. Thanks. You mostly answered my question. It was um, for CLO2 uh, with that 13 miles left and then testing. If you had a, a estimate, Lucas, on, on when you thought that would be completed and installs would start. Before Thanksgiving um, is yeah. the intention. Yeah, hopefully Finley's up beginning of next month and uh, have it completely ready to go by, by Thanksgiving. Thanks. Uh, go ahead, Janil, with materials, please. Yeah, so um, as many of you may know, we've ordered most of the 400 miles of materials that we needed. We um, found out that we have some additional materials that we need to order. We ordered the long the long uh, lead time items. And then we're finding out that we need some additional things that are considered consumables that weren't on our bill of materials. They're just things that are needed in the field as you go, and you don't necessarily have them on the, the BOM or the BOM. So we're, we've ordered some of that. In addition, we have ordered materials that Eustis had lent to us or were, were using that were in their possession and then they ran out of some of them. Some things that, that traditionally Eustis was using and we realized that it would be better if we had them um, on hand because Eustis was running out. So we did order some consumables and some additional items that we need in the field. And we ordered the long lead time items only things we still need to order for the first 400 miles to take us through the end of next year. Um, we're looking at what is needed. We're doing a reassessment and we'll place an order by the end of the year, perhaps by next month for anything that has become a long lead time item in the past couple of months so that we're getting ahead of the 2024 construction season. So that's um, that's our goal. That's our, our plan for warehousing. We're gonna probably take a bit of a step back on some of the warehousing scope. Um, be open a couple days a week, most likely, um, take fewer deliveries throughout the winter, slower construction season. Michael, you have a question. Yeah, uh, just getting back to, um, I assume that Woodbury is part of the COL3 um, and yeah. the make ready, obviously, uh, from Hardwick Electric has not happened. So I just want to be able to tell people in Woodbury that nothing's going to happen this season, this year, um, and then we'll have to wait for next year. Um, I think true? that's realistic. Yeah, I mean, okay, I, we, we've been we've been really trying to to get this done, and we're we're not getting a lot of um, progress from Hardwick Electric, that. unfortunately. Um, yeah. So we, yeah. So I, I think rather than set people's hopes high, and although we're going to continue pushing, we we need to set realistic expectations. And yeah. chances are, we're looking at Woodbury and CLO three generally being part of the 2024 construction season. Yeah. And Michael, if you're if you're going to be talking to folks, uh, please please understand that we have paid for this make ready hundreds I know of that. thousands of dollars many months ago. I know I know the particulars, and uh, you know with the front porch forums that you asked me to post, there are a number of people in town that you know I have little dialogues with, um, and um, so yeah, I just want to be able to t tell them what the expectations are. Um, yeah. So, and I yeah. do worry a little bit about what I should and should not say, but I, I think I have a pretty good sense of that now. I'm I'm not blaming anybody directly by name, but you know, Hardwick Electric is the, pretty much the only deal in town, so people know who I'm talking about without saying it. Right, and the crews have been right there. Their design has been completed many months ago. You, yeah. As you say, you know the story. Let me go on to a Siobhan. I see her hand is up. Go ahead, please. I was just thinking, would it be helpful if Hardwick and Woodbury residents showed up with helpful things like sledgehammers and shears and things to help work on the make ready? <laughs> No. At the Hardwick offices. Hello, we are interested in helping with make ready. Chop, chop. Well, yeah, I know that would the help. Problem, the problem with, with paying another contractor to do the work ourselves is that we've already paid for the work. So we don't want to pay for it try twice and then be in a situation where we're trying to get our money back. Yeah, um, that's just not so, right. No, no. Uh, Janiel, let me pass this back over to you for operations update. 
Sure, sure. Um, I do want to give Lucas an opportunity to fill in any gaps I might have um, left with any warehousing or materials. Is there anything you'd like to add, Lucas, to what I had said about that? No, I think you covered it really well. Okay. So operations, this is the most exciting piece uh, um, because we're finally operational after five years of hard work for many people on this call and somewhere between, well, well, I mean, I got here. Actually, I just figured out that I have been executive director of CV Fiber for one and a half years as of tomorrow, which is our ribbon cutting. Um, and I've seen tremendous growth. It's amazing. I think a couple days after I started this role in April of 2022, we had just received our first, we received our first fiber reels. And then December 6th, we started the construction. And on uh, December 21st, we had our our launch celebration at the Callis Town Hall to celebrate the beginning of construction. And here we are. And a lot has happened and it's been a lot of work. So the most amazing operations update is we are operational now. <laughs> we we have eight customers. We have our bank account set up. We have our customer accounts. Um, and we have people on high-speed internet. So that is the number one operations update. We have eight customers now, and we have seven more scheduled to be installed by Waitsfield next week. Um, and that list keeps growing. In fact, I believe there are about 95, as of this morning, uh, at this morning's operations call, 95 potential customers, people who had signed up in CLO1. So that's that's how many people we could get signed up. Now, when the ground starts freezing, we can't do underground installs. We can't do conduit or anything buried, but all of the aerial installs will continue throughout the winter, as I believe Jerry mentioned. Um, so that that's the, the main operations update. We do meet with operations every week and continually have conversations around compliance and all the fun business stuff, and as well as the practical serving the customer items. I see Tom's hand up. Uh, that's a, a good point to carry to people that we're talking to in the field um, that you know if you happen to be at a residence that's gonna require an underground line that it's going to be a few months longer before that's going to be possible, obviously, because of the freezing and so forth. But um, it just might not be at the top of people's heads when they're thinking about getting internet. That's a good point. And it has to be when the ground has thawed. So it's realistically after mud season. Um, that's when the undergrounding starts again. So it's it's actually easier to do some undergrounding right as the snow starts <laughs> to get ahead of it because the ground hasn't fully frozen yet. Um, so yeah it, that's a that's gonna delay things linda so if our customers have their own conduit already underground can we still do installations for them yeah yeah so long as there's room in it yeah that's gonna so every the general answer is it depends on the site assessment <laughs> so every uh, uh, Waitsfield has to go out and do a site assessment, but as long as it can be performed and they've already gone underground and they can pull it up or push it up, then yeah, but it, it, but it, it is subject to an assessment. RG? Uh, thank you. Who does site assessments? Do we have a list of providers? Actually, do do? Waits, yeah, actually Waitsfield does that for us, though the operator does site assessments. Um, are potential, can potential customers contact Wastefield and get an assessment, say, immediately to know what their prospect prospects are? Well, it depends on what zone you're in. <laughs> and if you can if you can sign up for service, then yes, you can sign up for a site assessment. But everybody in the read, you know, in the district can't just call up Waitsfield and say, hey, come look at my property. And what okay. because the reason for that is we have to hang the MST or install the MST tails. And then an analysis has to be done from the MST tail to the point of connection. So it's a it's a more in-depth engineering survey rather than just going out and checking it out. Um, so we do need to have the construction complete and the, the go list released from NRTC to Waitsfield in order to ass assess the site. Understood. Um, I um, Just as a footnote here, I was um, um, going to consult the map to remind myself where Cabot is located, and the maps are unavailable on our website. Um, oh. 
that apparently there's been another website redesigned and those maps are not do not appear so yeah i believe cabot's anyway, phone under ma03 is it 01 or 03 yeah you're 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 in you're in the marshfield olt zone and right. that will be the that will be the the spring construction got it hopefully. yeah i understand I, I, I'm, I'm reminded now, I knew we were in with Marshfield, but I just wanted to note that I couldn't find the map, couldn't access the map on the, uh, on the web page. It was moved around because I, I just checked and it looks like the map, so the map was at the top and now it's sort of lower down on the, on the bottom of the homepage. So it, it, okay. you kind of have to scroll down in order to see in order to see the, the maps. We have two maps up there. But but you are right, we are going through website redesign. Multiple right. maps are confusing people. So we, yeah. Olivia's done some amazing work on, the website looks uh, incredible. Yeah, it looks very clean. It's just that when I, when I go to uh, CB Fiber Services Expanding, click the map to see where service is now, no map appears. But that's, a, uh, that's just a footnote. I don't wanna, uh, get hung up on this conversation. Thank you. I'm Jeremy. Jeremy, I see your hands up. Yeah, uh, I was just going to point out that the other reason that uh, Wastefield isn't going to want to do site visits until closer to when install would be is that they don't get paid for the install. They don't get paid for site visits until the install happens so right. you know we, we don't want them going out and doing site visits in you know williamstown or plainfield you know until they're actually ready to start installing there that's a really good point jeremy yeah the, the site assessments are not a pay point for them at all <laughs> um yeah right okay good point uh, actually, right, Janiel, well, shall we to... move on to marketing uh, actually, really quick, Jerry, just I'm trying to do yeah. the attendance, and there are two Davids on the call, one David Lawrence, and then there's a David Guest. Is that David Mannix? Is it David Healy? Oh, David Healy. Okay. I didn't see your picture there. Sorry, David. Oh, wow, yeah. All right. You want to talk Janine, about marketing? You want to move on to marketing, please? Yeah, well, the big event is tomorrow. Um, I'll uh, Maybe Olivia can uh, talk a little bit about what, <laughs> Olivia, you've been here for what, six weeks, if that, five or six weeks? What a whirlwind. Um, and you've really brought us to some amazing places with your marketing um, skills. And not of least, tomorrow we have our ribbon cutting. Would you like to talk a little bit about what you've been doing for marketing um, in the past few weeks and what the event tomorrow is going to look like? Yeah, absolutely. So for tomorrow, we have just shy of 50 RSVPs. I suspect that there will be a couple of others who did not RSVP that will come in. Um, our agenda has been sent out to all of our panelists. Um, we have everything pre, pre, you know, drafted, so we know exactly what to expect in terms of questions. It will be a moderated panel. Uh, we will open up the floor for questions at the end of the last 15 minutes. Uh, there are a couple of residents who saw our front porch forum posting that RSVP. So it's a really good group of CB Fiber, local partners, residents. So I, I suspect that the conversations will be really, really constructive uh, at the event. In terms of media, we did send out a media advisory prior to the event. Uh, our press release was read uh, on one of the local podcasts, which is great on, as of Friday. Um, and we're suspecting that there will be more press co coverage uh, after the event. Uh, there is a press release ready to go after the event that I'll be sending tomorrow as soon as I arrive back home. So um, we, we've done everything. Um, if you are going to be at the event, you'll see a couple of new marketing collateral items that were uh, curated and customized for our refresh design, as you've noted um, on our website. We have a new retractable banner. We have new postcards with a launch QR code for tracking purposes. We have new business cards for CB Fiber staff um, and we have new uh, yard signs that are going up to local households. I've been working with David to get approval for local property owners in high traffic areas. So we've really you know, expanded our library of refresh collateral, and we're really hoping that this, this makes a presence moving forward, um, at least in the town of Calais. 
Um, I'm also hoping that this is a scalable process and it'll get easier for us moving forward. So as we do events for launches, we will have all of the collateral ready to go. So there was a lot of, you know, starting from scratch for this event, but I suspect it will get easier moving forward. Um, we also did the Barry Heritage Festival uh, a couple of weeks back, which was a brand awareness event. Um, in terms of our goals, uh, we received a lot of feedback from attendees uh, to help solidify our mission. People were really, really intrigued that we were community owned, locally managed in central Vermont. And that was, um, we had a competitor across the street, uh, but th those were talking points for our volunteers that really helps uh, stake our flag in the ground. Uh, but the next question was when, when will you be here? And of course, you know, Barry is is not in our immediate timeline, um, but we're hoping that helps, you know, raise a, a, a bit of brand awareness for CB Fiber in the most positive light. Um, in terms of other updates, we are working on another iteration based on friendly feedback. We are doing uh, interviews with our friendlies for RSO1 and RSO2. They are going through our website. So as we test the website, we are iterating on some of the communications and messaging to make sure we are practicing our brand pillars for transparency. Uh, we wanna make sure we're transparent and not over-promising, but we also wanna help guide people along the journey as well. So that is my next goal in the upcoming weeks to help expand um, the, libra the library of communications messaging on our website, because that is the first point of contact for the majority of folks that hear about CV Fiber. I think that's about it in terms of marketing. Excellent, thank you. Tomorrow's a, uh, a big day. There's so many big days. They seem to be just rolling, rolling across the the calendar recently. So that's 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 all good. Very good news. Uh, any any more discussion on our updates? If not, I'm going to hand this over to Alan to talk through some recommendations for our human resources policy. I believe everyone has received. Um, drafts in advance, and hopefully you took advantage of that. Uh, Alan, it's all yours, sir. Can everybody hear me okay? I've been having trouble with the connection too. Uh, okay. Yes. I see shaking I see shaking heads, yes, so I'll go ahead. Uh, so I, I did send out some documents. Hopefully you've looked them over, but quickly what we're doing tonight is we're reviewing some revisions to the current personnel mm -hmm. policy and the revisions regard bullying, harassment, and discrimination. That's in those those topics are in two different sections in our current policy, section eight and nine. If you remember, when we adopted the personnel policy, we included that it was subject to review by legal counsel. I think we all agree that was extremely necessary. That review has been happening over the past two months, uh, and. What we're doing tonight is a direct result of the first the first jab uh, that legal counsel has made at some of the most important parts of the policy. What I sent out to you uh, the other day, I guess it was Saturday or Sunday, I sent out two documents. Uh, both of them are PDFs. One is a PDF of the two sections in the current personnel policy on these topics, bullying, harassment, and so forth. The other is a clean PDF of the revised version of the topics as suggested by legal counsel and then reviewed and approved by the policy committee and also by the executive committee at this point. If you've looked over the documents, you'll see that the, uh, <clears throat> the numbering is a little bit different uh, than what it was originally. And that's what makes it difficult to say we can sit down and compare line by line what we have currently and what legal counsel suggested we have. So that's why we gave you the two different uh, uh, hard copy documents in the hopes that you had some time to go through them, uh, especially the second one, which is the revised version, to see if you had any questions about what we've done, what legal counsel suggested, and how we're moving forward. So what I'm going to do is let Janiel just give a quick overview of the of the uh, <clears throat> of the process we've used to go through the review, and then we'll open up the floor for questions. Thank you, Alan. The policy committee has done a lot of work on this human resources policy, this personnel policy. 
we decided that it was important to have a personnel policy that guides how CV Fiber wants to be, um, how we want to treat employees and folks working with us, and that we want to be a, a place where people want to work, where people feel safe working and productive. Um, so we started with a template from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. And we took that and we reviewed it as a policy committee. We looked at it and made some changes to it. Um, it was previously adopted subject to council review as Alan stated. And then we received a uh, we received co comments from council and that cr it, cr it maybe tripled the size of the document. It was 12 pages to 35 or something like that. So we we spent a lot of time going through council's recommendations now we decided to prioritize two very important sections of the policy rather than taking the policy as a whole we wanted to prioritize the bullying and harassment um, sections because we felt that they are extremely important um, and all of the policy is important but we wanted to prioritize these and they're huge they're a big lift so we reviewed them as a policy committee. Uh, we reviewed council's comments for those two sections and then sent it back to um, council with comments and received yet another go around, made a few very minor adjustments and then adopted it from pol at policy committee and at executive committee now to be uh, recommended it was recommended by executive committee to the governing board. Now the 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 sections that we're uh, that we're looking to approve tonight are only those two sections that I mentioned, sections 16 and 17 to the personnel policy. But we are in the process of going through all of the policy. Um, so uh, we are talking with council about additional changes to the policy as a whole. Um, and tonight we are only concerned with the bullying and the harassment policies. Thanks. Uh, I, I wanted to make sure that people understood when I sent out the copy of the revised policies, there are numbers on the top of the different sections, section 16 and section 17. What's going to happen is if we approve the language that is in the revised policy document. These sections will become section eight and section nine in our current policy. And that's that's one of the weird uh, things we got to deal with because we're not we're not doing everything all at once. We're doing these two sections first. So we're going to be pulling out the eight and nine that we have now and inserting what on the sheet I sent out is known as section 16 and section 17. But the content, the content is addressing the same thing, harassment and bullying and so forth. Are there any questions that we can we can RD answer? RD has his hand up. Go ahead, RD. You're on mute, RD. Are there any passages, Alan, um, or parts of the um, the revised policy that you wish to draw our special attention to? Are there any passages that gave you particular particular difficulty or that council drew your attention to? Uh, that's a great question, RD. Uh, I, you know, for myself, there were two things that struck me when we got back this very large package of uh, suggested revisions. The first was there were a lot more examples that were given about what some of these things, what exactly is harassment, what what's what what makes up for bullying, and those examples I think are really really important. It, it it makes it possible for people to have a better sense of what exactly we're trying to uh, watch to make sure that 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 we don't have people violating what in many cases is actually state or federal law at this point. The other thing that I think is really, really important is the process that uh, council included in the revisions that basically just says what we're going to do when we do have a complaint filed with us. It's, uh, it, 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 takes you, it takes you through the process we're going to use. Uh, it's a pretty standard process. It's based on what other, I believe, nonprofits use. Uh, and I feel really good about that because when we adopted the policy originally back in back in August, 
I think we all realized that there were a lot of a lot of uh, holes in it, and the biggest one was the fact we didn't have a process that was that was uh, sketched out within the document itself. We just gave very general terms. So I'd say those two things. And Sh Siobhan, you you're on the you're on the uh, you're in the meeting too, I think. If you have any questions, or, or I'm sorry, comments, or Linda, the same for you. And I don't, I can't see on my screen if John Morris is on the call, but please feel free to free to pipe up if you want. Yeah, they're, they're they're all on the call. Alan and Michael Gray does has, have his hand up though. Okay. Yeah, um, I would agree about the process. You really need to have something stated and what what you do in case there is an incident. Um, but I just. Um, when you say council, Janiel, I'm not really sure who the council is, but I, I know that VLCT does offer that at usually a much cheaper rate than most lawyers, um, just from my town government experience. And then I just want to comment that I don't receive any of this stuff. I have no I, you know, I have never seen the personnel policy. I had to request a con connecting information from Chuck um, for tonight. So I'm not receiving any of this to review. Um, Do I don't you not know have how, a CV I... fiber, M Michael? You don't have a cvfiber.net email address? Uh, I do, but um, I think I think Chunk mentioned that it's not functioning, um, and I don't know how to access it to be honest with you. So yeah, I'm kind of you know I'm kind of in the dark about a lot of stuff. Um, well, Chuck has his hand up, and, and I'm sure it's to address your issue. Go ahead, Chuck. You're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yep. All right, great. Um, yeah, Michael, I can I can see from the admin interface that you've not signed in to your CB Fiber account, um, and I can help you with that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll issue a password reset, and I'll send you an email to your personal address in a few minutes. Uh, that will contain your updated information and a link where you can log in. Um, and that's where you'll get all of this information going forward. Okay, so so it takes an active role on my part to connect. Um, all right, and the, and if I know and have that link, then, then I'll know to do that. Yep, and so uh, you can log in via their web interface. Um, you can also, if you have like Outlook or Thunderbird <coughs> desktop apps, you can log in that way. Uh, you can log in in the Outlook app on your on your phone, or or if you use like an iPhone, you can log in using the uh, the iPhone Mail app. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty much a luddite. I don't think I probably have the Outlook app, but that's about it. Um, I'll help you with it. Okay, and just have one other thought that's gone now. Um, okay, yeah, maybe it'll come to me. But David, I see your hand is up, and then RD again. Yeah, I just wanted to say that, unfortunately, of note, you cannot forward the email to an address that is actually more useful for you uh, due to policy. So that's a little unfortunate. It means that I'm a little behind on my mail here because I have to make a conscious effort to go look at mail someplace else. But um, just be aware of that. I have to do the same. I have two email, two email programs open at the same time all the time. Uh, RD, go ahead, sir. Alan, one more question for you. I noticed that uh, <clears throat> investigation is called for as a response to complaints of harassment or bullying. Uh, is, uh, I have not read the full uh, policy, but is there a, an investigative procedure that's described in detail? Yeah, there is. If, okay. if, you, had, if you had the document, it is in... Uh, it is on page five, if it were printed out in the first section, which is section 16. And it is a full page. It's called Discrimination, Harassment, Sexual Harassment, and Retaliation Complaint Procedure. Okay, and basically what that, it does. Okay, that's it. <laughs> it's great, there. Thank you. I will, I, will, I will read it. Okay. Alan, would you? Oh. Alan, would you consider making a motion? I have just put it into the chat. It should be there. I see it. The motion is that I move that the governing board accept the amendments to section eight and nine in the current CV fiber personnel policy as reviewed and approved by the policy committee and the executive committee. Second. 
Seconded by Siobhan. <laughs> any any additional discussion here? Michael again? Are you okay okay with me voting yes, having not looked at this at all? It just sounds like the vetting was all proper. So um otherwise I would have to abstain, which is technically a no. Um and I don't really want to vote no. So that, un, that's un, that's understood. That's fine if if you if you want to participate, okay. um, with a positive vote. Um, oftentimes we rely on our colleagues here to do the legwork for us when we haven't had the opportunity to do it all. So that's mm -hmm. that's not uncommon, and that's also why we go through the the process of sometimes it's a work group, and then it's to a committee, and then it's to the executive committee, and then it's finally to the governing board. So that's that's. Mm -hmm. Part of the okay. part of the process, Michael. That's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. RD, is that a residual hand or? No, no, that's a resi that's residual. I take it down. Sorry. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, any additional discussion then? Hearing none. Are there any opposed to the motion? All right. Are there <laughs> any abstentions? Again, hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. That's a Thank lot you. of hard work, folks. Thank you very much. It's a uh, it's a step. Uh, it's a step, but very good. Thank you. Thanks for all yeah, that and hard I, work. There's I, more to come. If I can just thank again Linda and John and Siobhan uh, on the policy committee. They, they've we've all put a lot of work into this. Janiel has been fantastic in guiding us and working with legal counsel. And I think it's all come together in a, in a really good way. And uh, it's a document that's really looking very good, I think. But there's more to come. Just realize this, because <laughs> we have lots of comments about all the other sections that uh, we haven't shown you yet. We're working on those. Excellent. Thank you, Alan. Thank you to everybody that put into this. Much appreciated. <laughs> Next on the agenda is our budget. Uh, let me uh, let me start a little bit here of where we are. This budget has been in development for since the summertime. Um, we have been working one one of the one of the things that makes this budget different from previ previous years' budget is that we are bringing experience to it. Now that we we have some operational understanding, now that we have construction understanding and, and all of the things that last year we were hoping to be able to do, now we're actually doing them and we're bringing that experience to to bear in the development of the budget. Uh, and that's that's been a very a very important thing and and uh, Janiel and Ray have been working uh, really hard on tightening up the actual things that we're doing with the forecasting that needs to be done for a budget. So the, the budget, as, you're, as you've seen it, because it's it's been sent out and has been discussed in multiple meetings, it's been approved by the Finance Committee, pushed up the chain of command to the Executive Committee and approved there and pushed up to the chain of, of command. Now it's landed here. What happens next if this budget is approved here? It moves on to the towns, where the towns in our next November meeting of the governing board will have the opportunity for public comment. So if the, the budget needs to go to the towns by the 21st of the month, I believe this month. In our November meeting, there's a public hearing on the, on the, on the comment that's a part of our governing board meeting. If you remember, we did that last year. We had a special time slot that was, uh, that was uh, the public comment on, on just the budget. If after we get through that public comment, we move the budget farther down, and in December, we can adopt the budget. That budget will be in our town meeting booklets, right? So there is there is a space of time between approving this budget to move forward and actually adopting the budget in December, where there will be more refinements made based on additional information that we're that we're just not in control of at the moment, especially on the revenue side, we may have better information on what kind of grant money and what kind of loan money may be, may be coming to us next year. And, and that will help, help us understand what our construction expenditures will be 
and and we'll be able to to uh, sharpen the pencil a little bit. But what we're presenting tonight and what you've already seen, I hope you have been able to take advantage of of having the budget presented to you in advance. Um, what 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 we have here is is at this point in time the best the best budget we've we've ever had, and by best I mean the the most accurate, the most information formed, the most informed is probably probably the uh, the, the the best way the best way to put it. So there there are I, I'll just walk through this really quickly, but I will take questions all the way through. So. At any time, please please uh, put your hand up. Uh, pretty uh, on the in income side, are are you know four point seven million dollars in grants? That is a hard number. Uh, we know that number. We are asking potentially if they can squeeze out some additional grant money. We 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 don't know where that stands, but we've we've asked for it. Um, but that's not included in the in the numbers that you see in the budget. Uh, the revenues are are purely subscription revenues, and those revenues are at the end of 2024, with a predicted rollout of how many folks are going to be able to be subscribers as as we continue construction and continue rolling out. That 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 eight hundred eight hundred and sixty thousand dollar number is is basically December the sum total of what we would have received come December thirty first. We have a five million dollar debt identified in there, and that that is something that is a placeholder. We are working with an actuary. Uh, uh, actu uh, PFM is their is their name. They were. They were uh, originally hired by Vicuda to perform services for, they have a master service agreement with Vicuda and, and we have a uh, scope of work with them and they are helping us uh, identify potential lenders and we don't know what that number is going to be. Uh, we are putting together a, a pre-prospectus, if you will, a, a request for information for those who might be interested and there are, there are at least 40 banks that they, they believe um, are worth sending out our preliminary information to. And that, that, that should be out by the end of the month. Maybe it's the beginning of November. So all this is happening um, in, in the last quarter. So we have $10.5 million in projected revenues. Our expenses are broken out a little bit differently this year than they have been in the past. And we've made we we've made a distinction between what is purely administrative, which is only three hundred thousand dollars worth of expenses, and what is operational. And the 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 operational expenditures are almost two and a half million, and those operational expenditures in, in, include staff salary. They they include installations. Uh, they include what we have to pay to to Waitsfield Telecom. They they include an estimate of maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. So most of our expenses, which which when you looked last year or two years ago, were under the ad purely administrative heading. Now most of our expenses are either in operations or they're in construction. Uh, our construction expenditures are six and a half million dollars, most of which is the labor for hanging fiber. Our pre-construction numbers are quite low. We only have 300,000 in, in pre-construction and that's because most of the design services are done, most of the make ready is done and most of the permits are done. Not when I say done, they, they, they are in, in the bag paid for, right? So, so we only anticipate something on the order of three hundred thousand dollars of pre-construction, um, but we will have almost six million dollars of construction and construction-related management. That number is flexible. That number will change based on how much we have to spend, 
because the one thing that we absolutely will not do is spend more than we anticipate having. So the, the, the money has to be pretty fast and hard in the bank before we're going to obligate anything with a contract. So that, that's how we're moving forward. And six and a half million dollars um, in construction related expenses uh, is what we're, we're hoping to, to accomplish next year. And if we, if we can accomplish that, we're, we're basically doubling what we did this year, a little bit more. So we will be will be beyond two two thousand passings. We'll be we'll be pushing. We won't quite be at most likely, but but we'll be we'll be pushing a thousand subscribers, eight hundred something subscribers, depending on our take rate. If we can if we can have David Healy knock on everybody's door like he he did in Callis, you know we'll have a fifty five percent take rate after the first couple of months. So yeah, we we'll see if we can get David to do that next year. Um, we, we do include debt service, which is a simple number, 6% of the 5 million. We, we, we believe we're, we hope to be able to borrow something on that order of magnitude. I'll mention that debt because it's important. It's, it's an interim debt. It's not, it's not meant to be a, uh, a long-term debt. It's, 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 a, it's an interim debt that gets us to the point where we can go out to the bond market or to more favorable instruments to do long-term debt that would absorb the 500,000 that, that we would be asking for now. Everybody knows this. This isn't some sleight of hand. This is the way it's being presented. And this is um, also, by the way, exactly following the, in the footsteps of EC Fiber. Scramble to get some kind of interim debt until you can get a thousand subscribers, which at that point you should be able to stand on your own two feet, which our numbers show we can, and then we can go out for revenue bonds or whatever other favorable instruments are more favorable instruments are out there. So that's the plan. So we have we have income of ten and a half million dollars, expenses that total up to to almost ten million dollars. And what's what's called reserves or residual of seven hundred thousand dollars when it's said and done. Um, I'm 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 happy to answer any questions. There are spreadsheets, of course, that go behind all of this in excruciating detail, which, as I said, we've been working on since July, and and you know brought to the point where. It was approved, this budget, as you see it, approved by the Finance Committee and then approved last week at the uh, Executive Committee. Henry, it's been a long time since we've spoken. Welcome. Hi there. Um, yeah, I was just curious, that grant number, what did that assume, what does that assume we're getting for grants uh, in a general way? Um, just, you know, an update on, on the grant outlook as part of the budget. That, that basically assumes that we get all of the money that was allocated to us uh, from the Act 71 grant. So there, there, there. We, we, we have either in hand or have already spent something on the order of 85 percent of the Act 71 grant money. Five percent of that grant money. We have set aside and told the VCBB to hold it because that's paying salaries for next year. You know, if 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 if, if the creek rises and we can't do anything else, we have salaries paid. So we're holding that money set aside. There's another 10% of the money that we've been allocated that is performance-based. That happens after we've done the testing. That happens after we've got subscribers. There, there are, there are, there are that those funds are withheld by the VCBB until we meet. I, I, to be, me, to be, Henry, we've either spent or is sitting in the bank, and it's all obligated somewhere. So there's no bead money in the in this uh, budget. There's no be there won't be any bead money in next year's budget either, most likely. That's uh, what I meant. We, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean okay, the, that... the following budget. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Because okay. bead is going to be very slow to roll out. 
and very uncertain as to what those numbers are or what those numbers will be. Um, so we're, we're, we're hoping that sometime in 2025, we'll have a better sense of when and what beat money will be allocated to us. And it may be that in, in mid 2025, we need to make a budget adjustment uh, for, that, for, that, for that year for bead money. If, if there's any to be had, hopefully there will be. Keeps going further and further out. Okay, thanks. Yes, sir, and more and more complicated. Uh, RD, sir. Uh, Jerry, would you run through the process um, where this budget goes from here? Am I expected to present this to the Cabot Select Board? Um, uh, uh, where do I take this budget in order to get us to uh, adopt uh, adopting it formally in December? I will. I will send an email. Uh, to you and your select board uh, that will include this budget and that will invite them to the uh, November 12th meeting uh, when we'll take public comment from the towns on this budget. So you don't necessarily have to have to move this along, but I, I will CC the delegates when I send this budget out to the to the uh, select board. I, I, I am a member of the select board, so um, uh, I'm going to get the double whammy. Um, You'll be doubly notified. Yes. Uh, and, and will this budget, can you break this budget down still further? I'm still, I'm looking at it. I'm still confused by the personnel line under administration. Um, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, and... Uh, it's only one of several questions that I have as I go through this budget. I would appreciate a more, um, a more granular breakout and perhaps um, uh, some annotations so that I know what I'm talking about when I present this at our next select board meeting. Uh, sure. Um, so the the personnel in it in it in administration. Are, are some of the uh, fees that we're paying for administrative assistance that's, that's going to individuals. Uh, for example, our note taking for, um, for our uh, meeting minutes. Um, we have um, basically administration. Like I said before, everything was under administration. We didn't have separate operations as a as a, as a category, so now we have separate operations as as a category. So anything that has to do with with operations is now no longer in the, the overhead heading of administration. That all of that now is in the category of operations. So our staff is in is in operations, um, some of the legal work, the licensing that we have to do, the office supplies, all of that comes under the heading of administration as opposed to what are the things that we have to have our hands on in order to provide service. And I can, I can rather than spend the time now, I can send you the backup sheets and you can ask many, many, many more questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, John, your hand is up, sir. I'm sorry, John. I think you're on mute if you're if you're talking. Sorry about that. I was on mute and I had my mouse on a different screen. Um, I think you just said that the budget meeting in November is going to be November twelfth. And uh, I'm, I'm afraid my mind might have wandered, but the 12th is a Sunday. Uh, no, it's the four, it's the 14th. My apologies. Yeah, okay. it's the same. It's, it's, it's this meeting next month, second Tuesday, and we will take a time, of a very specific time on the agenda that will be, you know, 20 minutes for discussion on the budget last year, 
I believe, correct me if I'm wrong from what you remember, but I believe nobody, there was no comment. And we, we uh, I put the item on the agenda too late and we were hanging around waiting for the clock to tick. So this time I'm gonna put it earlier in the agenda. So it, we don't make, I don't make that mistake. Uh, but yes, it, it, it'll be the, uh, the 14th, John, at, at, at our regular meeting. Thank you. Um, any, any other discussion on this budget? All right. Well, hearing none, let me, uh, let me make a motion. Uh, this is great. I'm really pleased that we didn't need to go into executive session. Um, I, 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 the more it's just a personal quirk of mine, the more we're outside of executive session, the better I feel. So let me make this motion. Whereas the governing board must approve a CV fiber budget in October to be sent to the member communities by October 21st for their review and comment. Whereas the governing board must conduct a public hearing on the budget at its regular meeting on November 14th. Whereas the governing board must adopt a CV Fiber 2024 budget in December. Whereas the Finance Committee and the Executive Committee have approved and recommend the CV Fiber 2024 budget to the governing board for approval. I move that the governing board approve the CB Fiber 2024 budget dated to October 23 for distribution to the 20 member communities. Second. Second. I heard Jeremy on that one, soft voice, but it was in there first. Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> Is there additional discussion on the budget? Hearing none. Oh, Chuck, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, I would just like to take a moment to say a huge thank you to the collaborative effort to bring the, this thing uh, out. Uh, budgeting is hard, but it gets particularly hard when you're talking about a subscription-based business uh, that is actually collecting revenues, um, and our next year is going to be huge for us. So I know a ton, a ton of work and revision and thought went into this budget. Um, and you know, sadly, Ray's not here to to hear this. But a huge shout out to Ray and and thank you to the entire finance committee for all of their work uh, in getting this to the finish line. Bravo! Absolutely, huge shout out to Ray. <laughs> Additional discussion. All right, hearing none. Are there any abstentions? Yes, I would like to abstention. You would like to abstain? Yes. Okay. Um, Jeremy, do we still have a quorum? Uh, yeah, uh, let me check. I believe so because we have that and we have, uh, yeah, so that would put us at 15 vote or 14 voting members. Excellent. Thank you, Jeremy. Are, are there any opposed to the motion? Hearing none, the motion passes with, with one abstention. Thanks, everybody. This is uh, really, really good to get behind us as a piece of our foundation for moving into 2024. Absolutely amazing. Jeremy, go ahead, sir. Uh, would you be able to paste the text of that into chat so I can uh, snag it for the minutes, please? Yes. Um, or do you want to just can... email it? Would I'll email easier? it to you. It's so much easier. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I, I'm I'm also going to uh, present the recording to to uh, you and Sybil in the morning. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. But that's 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 what I do. Okay. Um, if there's nothing else, folks, let's adjourn this meeting at seven oh nine. Is there anything else? Okay. Thanks for your help for your stopping. work, everyone. Yes. Thank Thanks, you everyone. All. Stopping Good night. the recording at seven. Bye -bye. Good night. See you tomorrow.